Hey guys, we're here at Beaver Rail at Next Gen RI where they use 3D printing to help keep the British railway system running at peak efficiency. I'm told they got a lot of awesome machinery in here, so let's get into that door and see what they got going on. It's uh uh Oh we gotta go! We gotta go! <laughs> Hey Nathan. Hey Grant, how you doing? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Good, good. Do you, uh, do you have a chair or something for me? Oh, uh, this might work for you. Oh, um, what? what? Oh, um, I mean, I, I, I guess? It's uh, not all that comfortable. I mean, uh, can we, can we, can we just, yeah. do, do you mind if we stand? He's, he's gotta get so, back to work anyways. That's my bad, my bad. I mean, it's, it's, it, doesn't he have a job to do? Uh, probably, actually. Yeah, I, I, I think so. All right, so other than play with Robot dogs. Of so what, what the heck do you guys do here at Beaver Rail? So we do loads of stuff. So from rolling stock, metal parts, painted mm -hmm. parts, but we also do a lot of plastic parts. This is an example of one of the plastic parts that came off of a train. Okay. Um, it says fire, pull pin, pull handle. So um, this one either was dropped yep. or was used. This was used very well. Okay. Um, the, the door opens up. Exactly. The problem with this, something like this, is the rail industry will pay a lot of money for something that doesn't do a lot. Uh -huh. This, off the shelf, over maybe 150 pounds. A hundred? I'm in the wrong business. Because it's rail approved plastic, it's yeah. rail approved stickers, it all has to be rail approved. I'm in the wrong business, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and you've utilized 3D printing from today's sponsor, Construct 3D, who you'll hear about in just a little bit, to take something that was a somewhat commercial off the shelf unit, Yep. that is, incredibly expensive mm -hmm. and be able to meet all regulatory requirements and it seems to look the part let's 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 compare them side by side well, here this is the one that we made okay so this is exact same dimensions so this one was supposed to have these pins in there yeah but they didn't come with it so we just we manufactured the pins as well and it's the same dimensions it's abs vapor smoothed yep and it passes all the tests even the hinges themselves are 3d printed which is super cool and enables you guys to produce these for quite a bit less, reducing the cost of the awesome. railways and ultimately making it so you don't have to have another item on the shelf taking up inventory space. Absolutely. So what else has been beneficial about utilizing 3D printing in your all's process? So when it comes to things like this, mm -hmm. if we were to make this from scratch, we would have to obviously design it and then um, injection mold it or vacuum form it, something like that. Yeah. Very, very expensive process. In the case of these, we only need a five or 10. So there's no point to create a mold for that many products. So uh, 3D printing is so much better. This is probably 15, 20 grand Absolutely. US uh, to make a mold like this. Yeah. Locally, of course, you don't want to be outsourcing it. And yeah. then you have to get them injection molded at a cost of quite a few a piece because you're only going to make a couple of them. 3D exactly. printing is perfect for this. 100%. And the rail changes all the time. So when we inevitably get a change on this design, mm -hmm. um, we would have to have the mold completely remade. That's another 10,000 pounds. So 3D printing is enabling you guys to be iterative and flexible as the railway changes, as the laws change. And yeah. You've been utilizing the Construct 3D One XL, right? We have, yes. How's it's this thing been working out for you? Really great machine. The thing is, is although we do low quantity parts, yeah. a lot of times we'll get like a prototyping job. We want to be putting four different, five, five different iterations on at once, mm -hmm. send them all to the customer, which one was best, and we get that one back, and then we can start producing that at low to medium qualities. We was approached by um, a company to create these um, awards for a, a rail show for local for MPs in in London. Once again, it's a it's a quantity thing. They sent us images of past designs, and it's very simple piece of wood with a piece of plastic on it or a piece of metal on it. Boring. These um, work can be so intricate because we don't have to make every single one by hand. We send it all to our printer here and that's what's printed now. A couple of weeks later, 10 of these pop out and they're all perfect. Let's take a look at this. And we saw that you're also making a base and you're filling it full of yeah. concrete to give it that extra weight. Yeah. And they're all gonna be fully painted. This one's not 100% ready for the limelight just yet, but you guys are utilizing it for more than just spare parts, replacement parts. You're utilizing it to think outside of the box. And mm -hmm. it's what a lot of us like about 3D printing. It enables us to not really stick with the confines of traditional manufacturing or yeah. what can be made somewhat locally. We can just freaking do it ourselves. 100%, because before we got this machine, 
and we could have never done this. We couldn't have done this on any of our other machines because they're just too small. Before we got into 3D printing whatsoever, this was completely off the cards. So it means we can accept more jobs because you know, we have the capabilities to do it in-house now. So have you seen the machines being valuable then on like the really low volume stuff as well? 100%, yeah. yeah. I mean, especially like the Construct um, XL. I personally would class more like an industry machine. Oh yeah. If you're looking at hobbyist machines and things for home, that's fine. But if you need the bigger build volume and the faster speed and things like that, this is just perfect. Yeah. I'm excited because this is, you guys are utilizing made in the UK mm -hmm. 3D printers to produce parts here in the UK for UK trains yeah. so that UK citizens have one less thing to complain about. Absolutely. And yeah. with them just down the road, something goes wrong, we just snip down. Can be good or bad depending yeah. on, uh, you know, the quality of the machine, but you guys have actually been really enjoying these machines. We have been really enjoying the machines and I paid a, a visit to Construct and we had a great time, had a great day together. Yeah, mm. they're, they've been a lot of fun and you know, they're helping us come out here to Lincolnshire and show other companies that are utilizing 3D printing and you know, also their machines obviously <laughs> to produce really cool stuff. Like trophies are awesome. We, we've done quite a few trophies in our day, but I, I will say things like this where you're able to take a product that you really can't get or difficult to find, they're bloody expensive, and you only need a couple of them. Mm -hmm. 3D printing is freaking perfect for that. Of course, yeah. and I would take it every time. And so Nathan, you guys don't just do railway parts here. Beaver Rail might be a bit of a parent company. Yeah. There's a daughter company. Can we talk about Next of Gen course. RI here? We can, yes. So. Next Gen RI stands for Next Generation Robotics Innovation. Rolls off the tongue really nicely, actually. It's robots, robots is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think the next step in technology is gonna be robotics, whether that be two-wheeled robots in a warehouse or robot dogs replacing guide dogs. Right. You know, it, it branches out oh, so that far. That would be really odd. <laughs> well, talk about what you guys are doing with these robot dogs. Yeah, the infrastructure of the dogs allows us to create applications mm -hmm. for anything. So it could be security, agriculture, um, or most cases just branding. When it comes to putting things on the dogs, that's when they really start to take off. So right. um, thinking about 3D printed brackets for cameras and sensors and things like that, it's things that before might have taken a team of people days to create a bracket to hold the camera in the right position. Yeah. The, Models for the, for the dogs are online. Uh, if you have the model for your camera, all you do is link them up and send it to one of these. And you know, a few hours later, you've got the part that you need. And you guys are using like the Unitree dogs, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So we're Unitree's UK partner. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a load of demo units and uh, we're constantly developing new applications for them. And from, from what you've been telling me, and this is dangerous, <laughs> by the way, uh, they're way more affordable than I was expecting. That, that big one, eh, maybe not the most <laughs> affordable. That big one's like, what about? 80, 80 or so, 000, yeah. but the smaller ones, they're considerably more affordable. A hundred percent. And I think that's the big thing because you get these dogs going out to regular people just like you and me. It's not just companies that can now afford these. Me and you could go out and buy one. And on top of that, what you get now is, is people creating their own designs and things. So mm. that's, that's where this part here came from. Okay. So this is a transport key um, for the go-to. So somebody realized, just a college student who had picked one of these up realized when you pick them up, they kind of just flop when they're turned off. Yeah, their legs kind of. Exactly, yeah. so this is a stopper. You just stick it in the back, holds the motors in place, nice and clean, up and straight into the case. So we've got a dog here without yep. any key in it. And when we pick it up, the, yeah, it just goes yeah. all So now try well, put it on the ground like and, and you'll realize it's a problem. Yeah, um, it doesn't work well. So, all right. We have this printed key, but how, how the heck does this go in? How does it work? So on the back here, there's two stops by the motor. You see okay. them there and there. All that happens is this goes in this side and goes in this side. I'll try and do it with one hand here, but. Here, I got that side. Yep. And then look, it holds the legs there. Oh. These see. legs here come up and fold on the inside. And now look at that. While it was in the air, sorted. So that... it, it, it went from a you know, all limp and floppy like rotisserie yep. chicken to one that's been tied up with butcher paper. Exactly. And now when we set it on the ground, it's no issue at all. When we take it and set it into the case, it fits well, we can close everything up. There's no BS and a small little 3D printed part solves a major like use issue with this thing, 100%. right? The thing is for the time it takes to print those, I mean, I have a whole box of them. I printed in probably um, two hours. There was lots more in these. They go out to our customers as well. Um, but. And you guys have actually included a uh, little instruction booklet for it with the transport key. 
that's a great value with 3D printing and open source because these things are also open source? Completely open source, yes. So, um, Oh, this is dangerous. Florida, <laughs> man, Florida man might be getting a, uh, uh, a, a robotic dog here. I don't... And that's where the robot dog head with the ears came from? Yeah, so, yeah. Again, just a college student who happens to have one or, you know, you don't even need one because the files are available online. Right. So you could design and create these things and sell them as a product without even buying the dog. So these Unitree dogs, they also have an education variant, which yeah. has some T-slot rail on it, which means yeah. you can do 3D prints for it, like a USB hub that enables you to add a bunch of extra stuff to it. So 3D yeah. printing is great for the education side, the business side. Talk about some of the opportunity that, that you think could be possible with these dogs. Yeah, so the education version especially um, has an expansion dock on the back. So it has okay. um, an NVIDIA's Jetson Orin on the back. So a really oh. powerful computer. Proper. Um, and on top of there is some T-Rail, like you say. So for stuff like this, I could just make it slot straight onto that T-Rail. Yep. Um, it means I don't have to have a dangly, you know, um, USB hub hanging off the side because there's only one USB port. We've had a couple of different variations of this um, as we've changed USB hubs. This is a powered one. Mm -hmm. You can get power from the dog too. So nice. it just okay. worked perfectly. And then we put all our extra bits, plug them straight into there and it just works. On the education unit, there happens to be some T-slot rail, right? And well, that means we can attach pretty much anything that we, we, that, that we want to yeah. one. So I'm currently thinking of a um, a fully 3D printed um, robotic arm. Okay. It's in very early stages at the minute, so just working out how many degrees of freedom we need, just for simple things, opening doors, carrying glasses, you know, trivial things, but I mean, you can Trivial imagine. things, carrying glasses, it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, trivial. You can imagine how much you could do just with that, that framing and a yeah. 3D printer, you can put anything on there. Anything you can think of can go straight on top of the dog. If you put a bit of electronics in there as well, it can communicate with the dog directly. I love it. So let's pass it off to you guys watching. If you had access to one of these dogs and may maybe you'll have access to one through me soon, you know, get subscribed and leave a like. <laughs> what would you mount to the back of one of these dogs and how could we make it absolutely ridiculous? I, I would love to know. And you know, if you, I guess if you want to have something useful too, maybe that would be cool to see as well. But Nathan, this has been awesome to see how you guys are, are utilizing Construct 3D printers, mm -hmm. how you've decided to keep things local when you can, get good customer support, and have machines that are, especially for what they're offering, incredibly affordable for that small business, light industrial, and hopefully soon we'll be seeing the full industrial yeah bad mama jamma here as well, <laughs> pumping out some carbon fiber filled nylon or some tolomer or something like that for you guys here. I'd love to see more 3D printed parts out in the wild. I don't know, comment below, where's the craziest place that you've seen 3D printed parts? Jacob from Concept was telling us that local McDonald's are starting to 3D print the lampshades of all things. <laughs> Not really going to McDonald's, but screw it. Let's go see if we can find some. That sounds like fun, but Nathan, this has been awesome. Thank you for letting us take a look around and, uh, have a little bit of fun with the dog pack you happen to have here. Yeah, of course. So that's all we have for you guys today. Don't forget to take a look at Beaver Rail, Next Gen RI, and of course, today's sponsor, Construct 3D, in that description down below. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. When we take it, we set it into the case. <laughs> the printed part fell out.